Warm greetings. Today is Tuesday, June 18, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 11.30 in the morning local time in Texas, where, like in Tamaulipas, preparations are underway for the impact of what will soon be Tropical Storm Alberto. We continue to monitor several areas in the Atlantic with probabilities of cyclonic development. The system that poses the most imminent risk is potential cyclone number one, a low-pressure system with a high probability of becoming a tropical storm before reaching Tamaulipas and southern Texas during the afternoon hours of Wednesday. However, the effects should begin to be felt across the region tonight and early Wednesday morning. Additionally, in this video, I will briefly talk about the low-pressure system located north of the Caribbean and heading towards the state of Florida and Georgia, which has a low probability of cyclonic development over the next few days. I will also provide a brief update on the rain that will continue to fall over much of Central America, especially in southern Guatemala and El Salvador. At the end, we will talk about another low-pressure system that is expected to form in the western Caribbean Sea, crossing into the Bay of Campeche where it could also find favorable conditions for cyclonic organization during the next week. The Atlantic is quite active, especially considering that we are in the month of June. Remember, this is associated with the recent passage of a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which has helped form a Central American gyre. As we discussed at the end of May, these types of systems often generate multiple areas of low pressure that can find conditions for cyclonic development. It appears this Central American gyre will eventually lead to the formation of two tropical cyclones, Central America continues under the influence of the southern part of the circulation, resulting in a flow of moisture from the southwest, bringing heavy showers today, particularly to southern Guatemala, El Salvador, southern Honduras, and western Nicaragua. Projections indicate that over the next three days, an additional 400 to 500 millimeters of rain may fall on El Salvador and southern Honduras, while southern Guatemala and western Nicaragua could see between 250 and 350 millimeters. Unfortunately, the rain will continue over the coming days, and it won't be until Sunday when we expect weather conditions to improve for a short period before another low-pressure system develops, which we will discuss at the end of this video. In this image, you can see the tropical outlook from the National Hurricane Center updated at 8 a.m. Note the potential cyclone number one in the Bay of Campeche. Additionally, we have the low-pressure system located far north of Puerto Rico, with a 20% chance of development as it moves west-northwest, eventually reaching northern Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina. Yesterday, the National Hurricane Center again marked the southern Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche as areas where a similar development to what we are seeing now could occur. We will be monitoring this yellow zone for the possibility of developing a new cyclone next week. Before talking about the possible tropical storm Alberto, let's discuss this low-pressure system. As you can see in the visible satellite image, in the last 24 hours, convective activity and precipitation have developed north of Puerto Rico, forming a low-pressure system that is slowly moving west. As it approaches the northern Bahamas, conditions could become marginally favorable for the development of a tropical depression. However, most models do not currently forecast a tropical cyclone before reaching the southeastern United States. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center maintains a low probability of development. The limiting factor will be dry air surrounding the circulation of this low-pressure system as it approaches the United States. There is no need for concern in the southeastern United States about this disturbance, although we should remain alert in case of any unexpected changes. For now, it will only bring some rain between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now let's talk about potential cyclone number one of the season. It is a low-pressure system in the Gulf of Mexico associated with a broad circulation stemming from the Central American gyre. As projected, this circulation is very broad, making cyclonic development slow. A Hurricane Hunter aircraft is investigating the area and has not yet found a defined or compact circulation, so it is not yet a tropical cyclone. Despite this, it is generating some tropical storm force winds northeast of the circulation. This is why a tropical storm warning has been issued for the coast of Texas and Tamaulipas, as tropical storm force winds may begin to affect these regions from tonight and early Wednesday morning. Look at the projected trajectories of the specialized models. The system is expected to start taking a more northwest turn soon. Within about 24 hours, it will begin a complete westward movement, reaching the coast of Tamaulipas by Thursday afternoon or evening. These 36 hours over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico should be sufficient for continued organization. It is expected to become Tropical Storm Alberto at some point. With models projecting, it will reach Tamaulipas as a moderate tropical storm, with maximum sustained winds near 50 or 55 miles per hour. Here, you can see the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. By Wednesday morning, it should be Tropical Storm Alberto, 
eventually moving over Tamaulipas during the afternoon and evening hours of Wednesday. In blue, you can see where the tropical storm warning has been issued. Please pay close attention because, although the center of circulation is expected to enter central Tamaulipas, the tropical storm warning extends into the state of Texas, meaning hundreds of kilometers north of the circulation. This is precisely because, as you can see in this image in yellow, the extension of tropical storm winds remains to the north and northeast of the circulation. This is the area that will be moving over southern Texas and northern Tamaulipas. In this case, do not focus on the trajectory of the center but rather on the effects that will be felt in the northern part of the circulation. Today we also have better consensus among global models. For example, the GFS model now agrees with the projection of the European model, showing a moderate tropical storm approaching central Tamaulipas by Thursday morning. Meanwhile, the European model continues to project a tropical storm entering Tamaulipas during the early hours of Thursday morning. If we consider the projections of the past few days, the European model definitely appears to have the best projection for this disturbance. Other models, such as the German model, have also joined this solution. It also shows a moderate tropical storm entering Tamaulipas during the early hours of Thursday morning. The difference between the models and the National Hurricane Center's projection is that the National Hurricane Center forecasts the center will enter during the afternoon hours of Wednesday, unlike the models that have it entering during the night hours of Wednesday or early Thursday morning. Regardless of when the center reaches Tamaulipas, the circulation is very broad, and the rain and winds will begin to move over southern Texas and northern Tamaulipas starting tonight, Tuesday. It is important for residents of the coast and southern Texas, as well as the coast of Tamaulipas, to prepare for tropical storm conditions that will begin in the next 24 hours. Let's talk about the rain and winds expected across Texas and Mexico. But before that, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of these forecast videos, and to stay informed during the hurricane season. Click the red button below the video that says subscribe, then click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Now, let's look at the anticipated rainfall totals for southern Texas. You can see that between the cities of San Antonio, Laredo, Corpus Christi, and Brownsville, 6 to 8 inches of rain are expected starting early Wednesday morning and extending until at least Friday. These rainfall totals can cause significant flooding across southern Texas. Keep this in mind as you complete your preparations. Additionally, note that for northern and northeastern Mexico, specifically over the states of Coahuila, Nuevo León, and Tamaulipas, Rainfall totals between 150 to 200 millimeters are expected, which can also cause some flooding, including in the city of Monterey. Furthermore, further south, over the states of Tamaulipas and San Luis Potosí, between 150 to 250 millimeters are expected over the next three days. Here, there is also a possibility of flooding, but this rain will definitely be welcome to alleviate the drought affecting the region. In terms of wind, you can see the projection of wind gusts according to the GFS model. From Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning, some tropical storm force winds will be moving over southern Texas. Wind gusts between 50 to 60 miles per hour are projected to affect the region, which can cause some local power outages and the fall of some trees and branches. Remember that even though the center of the future tropical storm will be entering central Tamaulipas, it will be the northern part of the circulation that will have the tropical storm winds. Therefore, the northern corner of Tamaulipas can also receive some wind gusts near 65 km per hour. For the rest of Mexico, the winds should not be as strong. Finally, let's talk about what will happen next week. It is very likely that we will see a scenario almost exactly the same as what we are seeing right now, as the Central American gyre will again generate a low-pressure system that will move over the southern Gulf of Mexico, where there is a possibility of tropical cyclone formation. For now, the National Hurricane Center only maintains a 20% probability of development over the next seven days. But as you can see in this image, the ensemble members of the European model have over a 75% probability of a tropical depression forming by the beginning of next week. This will again generate a rain event that will affect Central America and Mexico. Let's look at the model projections. Here we have the GFS model, which develops a broad circulation over northern Central America and southern Mexico starting next Friday. It eventually develops a low-pressure system in the Bay of Campeche and possibly a tropical depression or tropical storm entering Tamaulipas during the night hours of Monday or Tuesday morning. This also coincides with the European model's projection, which also shows a circulation developing over the Yucatan Peninsula during the morning hours of Friday. Eventually, this energy moves over the Gulf of Mexico, where it also develops a low-pressure system moving over Tamaulipas during the hours of Monday and Tuesday next week. We are talking about a period of heavy rains for Texas, Tamaulipas, southern Mexico, and the central northern region of Central America that will continue over the next few days. All of this is associated with a Central American gyre that will remain over the region at least until the beginning of next week. As you know, here at I will stay alert to keep you informed of updates. Before I go, I wanted to invite you to support my project by becoming members of my channel. If you are interested, 
go to the blue button that says join below the video, click on it, and see the different types of memberships where, with a small monthly contribution, you can support my project and receive some additional benefits. Well, with this, I say goodbye. I'll record a new update for you tomorrow. See you later.